Hello everyone, I hope you're going well. I've got a tutorial video here today on using the XCOM 2 mod Starting Soldiers. Now this is a really good mod, it allows you to totally customize the soldiers that you start the game with, including whether they're random or from the character pool, what their class is, and what level they start at. It's been really useful for me with my solo class challenge videos, being able to start the game with exactly the soldier type that I need for the challenge. And I've had a request as to show people how to get the mod up and running, because it can be a little bit annoying. So I'm going to do that today. Now before we get started, there's two pieces of software I recommend you have on your computer. The first is the XCOM 2 Alternate Mod Launcher and the second is Notepad++. I've left descriptions in the video to other YouTube videos showing how to download and install those pieces of software, so if you haven't done that already, do that now and then come back and we'll get the mod up and running. So once you've got the software you need, we just wanna to go to the XCOM 2 Mod Workshop on Steam and we're just going to search for the mod that we want, which is Starting Soldiers. Now at the time of making this video, there's two versions of the mod. One, I believe, is for the vanilla game, and then the second is the War of the Chosen version. I play with War of the Chosen, so that's the version that I'm going to use. And just like you would with any other mod, you just hit the subscribe button, let the mod download. Make sure that the game, including the mod launcher, is not running when you hit subscribe, otherwise I don't think it will download. So once you've got the mod downloaded, you just wanna open up the alternate mod launcher. And if like me, you've got way too many mods to keep track of, we've got the filter box at the top and we can just search for starting soldiers again. All right, hopefully it's there for you, otherwise something's gone wrong in the installation. Make sure that the box next to it is checked so that the mod actually runs when the game starts. And then we're just gonna right click and we're going to click on Show in Explorer. Now this is going to open the folder on your computer where the mod is saved and the file that we're interested in is the config folder. So open that one up there should be four files in there, and we want the bottom one. Uh, it should be called XCOM Starting Soldiers or XCOM Starting Soldiers .ini, depending on whether you've got file extension showing on your computer or not. It won't make a difference either way. If you've never used Notepad++ before, right click on the file, go down to Open With, choose another app, Notepad++, always use this app to open any files and hit OK. You'll only have to do that the first time. Every time after, it will then open in Notepad++ by default. Notepad++ works just like Notepad does that comes on every Windows machine. It's just got nicer formatting and it makes things easier to read and easier to work with. Now this any file that we've just opened up is basically the guts of the mod. This allows us to modify things to exactly how we want them to be. Just so you know, starting out, anything in green is a comment in Notepad++. Now a comment will not be read by the game. The game will skip over any comments. The comments are just there for us to be able to read you'll be able to tell if something is a comment in addition to being in green, the line will start with a semicolon. Now, if you ever wanna make a line not a comment so that the game will actually read it and load whatever it says, really easy to do, you just backspace on the semicolon, you can see that the line turns to black, save the file, and now the game will read what is ever on that line. Alternatively, the opposite works just as easily. If you want to get rid of a line because you don't want the game to read it, you can make it a comment very easily. 
I generally recommend making things comments rather than just deleting the line completely. It just makes it easier in case you need to go back in the future, you realize you actually did need that line all along, you've still got it there as a comment rather than it being lost and having to re-download the file. All right, now the first thing that we're going to change in this file is we're just gonna scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see on that third last line on line 63, it says plus B remove starting soldiers equals true. We're just gonna put a semicolon on the end of that line and then just save the document. Now I haven't really played around with these last two commands in the document, so we're not gonna worry about those for today. Instead, we're gonna scroll back up to line 33 and you'll see that there's plus character info equals soldier name equals Mike Davis, blah, blah, blah. That's what we wanna be looking at. Now each line here is a character that the mod is going to try and load into our barracks at the start of the game. So we're starting on line 33 and we go down to line 60. So that's about 27 characters, if my maths is correct, that the game is gonna try and load into our barracks. The first four soldiers in the list will be the four that you take on the gate crasher mission. All the soldiers after the first four will be in your barracks. So if I wanna start the game with 10 soldiers, I should only have 10 lines for character info here with 10 different characters. If I wanna start the game with 40 soldiers in my barracks, then I'm gonna to need to add in 40 different lines, each one with a different character. Now, in terms of how the characters get generated, what's gonna happen with each character is the game is going to look into my character pool and look for someone with the name Mike Davis. If it finds a character named Mike Davis, it will set him as a Reaper of rank two and I'll talk about ranks a little later on. If there is no character in my character pool with the name Mike Davis, then the game will create a random character who is a Reaper and who is rank two. Once the game is finished doing that, it's gonna to go to the next line and look for a character named Drask Dropy. If it can find him, it will make a skirmisher of rank two. If it can't find him, it will make a random character that is a skirmisher of rank two. And so on and so on down the list until the entire barracks is populated. Now this file is just how the mod author has written it. None of these characters are in my character pool. So let's have a look at what happens if I run the game. So I'm just gonna go back to the mod launcher and I'm just gonna hit run War of the Chosen. Okay, so you will see here that our Reaper named Mike Davis doesn't exist. So instead the game has generated this random Reaper called Dwayne Armstrong. Same thing with the Skirmisher, same thing with the Templar, same thing with the Ranger. Now, even though the names and the characters are random, the classes and the rank the game has assigned to these soldiers. The first four soldiers that were in our list on the mod were a Reaper, a Skirmisher, a Templar, and a Ranger. And that is what the game has given us. So you can start with random soldiers of whatever class that you want. However, you may want to use characters from your character pool. So let's have a look at how to do that. So if we just return to our ini file, I'll just reiterate, we had a Reaper, we had a Skirmisher, we had a Templar, we had a Ranger. They just weren't these particular characters because these characters don't exist in our character pool. Now I believe you can leave the name blank and it will always generate a random character. But if you don't wanna generate a random character, if you want a character from your character pool, you just need to type in their name. So for me, 
I'm going to change Flynn Kennedy to the Drifter. Now, the Drifter is a character in my character pool. You should change the name to a character that is in your character pool. Now, the name has to be spelt exactly perfectly. So the first word is the first name. The second word is the last name. I don't believe nicknames are required, so I recommend just leaving them out. Now for the Templar, I'm also going to change that to Failed S. Again, that is a character in my character pool. So now let's run the game again and see what happens. Alright, so a couple of things have happened here. Here, our Ranger, you can see, is the Drifter. One of the characters in my character pool. You'll see the Reaper is still random. The Skirmisher is still random. And the other thing you'll see is that the Templar is also random. The Templar did not become failed S. Now I'm going to show you why that didn't work, just so you can avoid this trap yourself. So we're just going to uh, go back to the main menu. I'm going to go to the character pool. And it might take us a while because my character pool is, is huge, but failed is at the top here. Now, if we click on failed, right, he's in here as a regular soldier. He's not in here as a Templar. Now, if we wanted him as a Templar, we would have to change soldier type to Templar. All right, so let's try and find a Templar in my character pool. So here we go. Aegis Rider is a Templar. So let's see what happens when we change that Templar's name in our any file to Aegis Rider. So I'm just going to go back to the Templar and I'm going to make the name Aegis Rider. And again, the name must be spelt perfectly. If you make a typo, the game won't recognize the character, won't load them in. So I've saved that. Now let's run the game again. So here we are back in the game. Again, the skirmisher is random. The reaper is random. The ranger is the drifter, which we want. And the templar is Aegis Rider. So it's really important that the soldier type in the character pool matches the soldier type in the any file. Now, not the class, but the type. There are five types of soldiers. There is Templar, Reaper, Skirmisher, Spark, and then a normal soldier. So again, just make sure that the soldier type in the character pool matches the soldier type in the any file. If you have a character in your character pool as a Reaper and try to load them into the game in the any file as a Templar, it won't work. The soldier type must match. So that's how the names work. And once again, I know I keep saying it, but it is important. The name must be spelled perfectly. Now, I believe you can leave the soldier class blank and it will create a random class soldier for you. And then the last thing here is the soldier rank. Now the rank is just as it sounds, it is the soldier's rank. A zero will start the soldier as a rookie. A rank of one will start them as a squatty. A rank of two as a corporal. A rank of three as a sergeant and so on and so on. So if you wanted to, you could make all of your starting soldiers rank six, which would mean you would start the game with a barracks full of colonels if that's what you wanted to do. I don't recommend going over six. I haven't tried it, but I think it would probably break something. This is Future Drifter here. Just wanting to add in one more piece of information that I noticed as I was editing the video. Similarly to not having a rank higher than six, if you've got a special type of soldier, that being a spark, a skirmisher, a templar, or a reaper, 
I also recommend not going below one for the rank. Do not put a zero in as the rank for any of those special troop types. Again, I haven't tried it myself, but I think it might break things. So with your special classes, always go a rank of at least one is my recommendation. And if you do set the soldier rank to higher than a squatty, you won't be able to get any extra abilities until after the first mission and you can access the level up screen for your soldiers. So what I recommend you do in order to start with the barracks that you want is just to semicolon out all of these. Again, you don't want to delete them because they're going to serve as a template that we can use. Oh wow, there's there's a lot of them. I feel like there is a faster way to do this, but um, it's been a while since I've done any programming, so please forgive me. And then what I would do is simply find the type of soldier that I want and copy the template. So if I want to start with a ranger, let's just go into this example ranger that the mod author has left me. I'm going to copy that. Notice I didn't copy the semicolon. Paste it in. Name the soldier, whatever I want to name the soldier. I can change the class if I want. I want to start as a squatty, so I'll change the rank to one. All right, and then if I want to start with a specialist, I'll just go in, copy the template for a specialist, paste it in, and then change whatever information that I need to change. And then you can just go and do that until you've filled up your barracks as much as you want. And again, if you want just random soldiers, then all that you need to do is leave the name blank, leave the class blank, set the rank to zero, and that will give you a rookie. And then you can just paste those in to your heart's content. And I can have as many rookies as I want if I just want random soldiers rather than particular classes or characters. All right, so the last thing that we're going to look at is what to do if you have a custom class mod and want to start the campaign with a custom soldier. Now, the mod does actually support most class mods. I believe there are some that it doesn't work with, but I'm not sure about that. I haven't tested it myself. So what we're going to do is I've just gone to this class mod here, the Sentinel class mod, and I'm just going to subscribe to that and wait for it to download. All right, then I'm going to go back to my mod launcher and I'm just going to search for the class mod that we just installed again make sure that it's ticked and I'm just going to right click and go show an explorer and I'm going to look in the config folder now the information that you're after is the name of the class now that will not necessarily be the name of the class in the mod, but the actual name that the game uses to recognize that class. Generally, I would start with the XCOM class data, but it will vary depending on the mod, I believe. Now, this is the information that we're after. Soldier classes equals Sentinel, so that means if I want to start the campaign with a Sentinel, I just go back to my any file for starting soldiers, and we're just gonna change the soldier class from blank to Sentinel. And I've changed the rank to one because I want the Sentinel to start as a squatty, not as a rookie. And I then hit save. So now let's go and boot up the game and see what happens. 
All right, so now we load into the game. We see Failed is there as a specialist, which was in our ini file. We see that the Drifter is there as a ranger, which we put in the ini file. We see that we have a random rookie, which was in our ini file. And we see this character here, Martina Muller, who is a sentinel. And the way that we know that is because Failed is here as the specialist. He's got the gremlin ability, but she's actually got the gremlin ability plus Marauder. So she is there as a sentinel, just as we put into the ini file. So just to reiterate there, the main thing when we're dealing with a custom class is that you want to be able to go into that class mod, into the class data, and find what the name of the class is. Once you've got that, you can just put it into the ini file for starting soldiers. In most classes, starting soldiers should recognize. I have heard that some of the non-human classes like shivs and mechs don't work. I haven't tried it myself, so I can't say if that is correct or not. And so that is how we set up the ini file for the starting soldiers mod. Once you know how to use this ini file, it offers you a lot of possible customizations. You can start any campaign exactly how you want. I hope that this video was helpful. This is my first time doing a video like this, a tutorial. So I hope that I did a good job. If you've got any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. I will do my best to answer them. Have a great day and I'll catch you later.